Hi, Jenny here. Um, today we're going to talk about how to make it, how to activate EM. It's actually very simple if you just know how to do it and have a go. Honestly, it's taken me ages to find all these things and organize it. I feel like it's a cooking show, but in real life, it's, it's not that hard. What we're going to do is make one liter of activated EM. And as I've talked about in a couple of the other videos, activated EM is what you want to use in your garden. It has different names. Uh, EMA is standard in uh, Europe, in Northern Europe, uh, Scandinavia, we call it microfirm and you can buy it commercially in these bag and box things. Uh, in Asia, it's called Airmas, uh, Asia Pacific. And in some places, it's even called CEM, Concentrated EM. EM stands for EM Activated Solution. Mm. So we're going to make one litre. And the recipe for doing this, and I'll show it again later, I wrote it out, is that you need EM and you need molasses. And the basic recipe is 5590. Mm. That means 90% water, 5% EM and 5% molasses. And depending on how much you want to make, 20 litres, 5 litres or 1 litre, these are the amounts of EM and uh, molasses that you need. Okay, so today we're going to make a little batch, um, one liter of EMA, and we're going to use 50 milliliters of each of EM1 and molasses. So um, here's my one liter jar. Um, here is my uh, measuring thing for the 50 milliliters of molasses and EM. Now I'm going to mix in the molasses first because it's really thick and sticky and I want to dissolve it in hot water. So I'm going to take my uh, molasses. I have this little jar here, but you might also have it in a one liter jar. And I'm going to pour in uh, 50, you can see how thick it is. And I'm looking for the marks. Here we go. Uh, half a deciliter. It's 50 milliliters. And it's exactly this much, like to here, that I filled it. Now, because this is really, really uh, thick and gooey, what I'm going to do is mix it with hot water. Not a lot of hot water because we don't want this to be hot. So I'm going to pour in what I can, like that. See how thick it is, right? Honestly, this is really a cooking show. And I've got my hot water here. Um, so I'm just going to mix that a little bit to dissolve it. And it's like any kind of sugar thing, you know, it, it dissolves in due course. And when we add more water, I'll make sure that's quite cold water so that it won't be too hot for the microbes. Mix it around a little bit like this, right? Splashing everywhere. Um, I'll just put another splash of hot water in here to take the last. It's um, reasonably accurate. It's like baking cakes or something like that. You know, you, you should actually measure what you're doing. Um, it's not just a splash of this and a splash of that. So here we're pouring in 50 milliliters of molasses. Now that's pretty well mixed, I think, in here. So we just give that a, a good shake to make sure that molasses is already mixed. That's really good, actually. I've already labeled it, really smart. Um, and what we're going to do now is, hmm, nah, cooking show. Um, here I have just normal clean cold water and I'm going to pour that in here to cool down the temperature because we don't want this to be uh, too hot. The ideal temperature is between 20 and 30 degrees when you ferment this. Um, now that's cooling down a little bit. So what I'll do is fill this almost to the top and then add in the EM at the last minute. The one liter mark is just here on this particular bottle. So I'm filling it to just the level where when I add in 50 milliliters of EM, it will make one liter in total. Okay, so I take my measuring thing 
again. And this time I'm going to mix in EM1, the mother culture that we've talked about before. Okay, 50 milliliters of this, which is just this much. And that goes into here because the temperature now in this is quite cool. Like so. And that's quite thin and so it mixes itself really well. That's it. Actually, we've made it. We're ready. Now, we're going to ferment this for one week, seven days, and it needs to be somewhere quite warm, although that depends on your context. Uh, it should be not in direct sunlight, and that means that in a hot place like Myanmar, where I work a lot, you want to put it in a cool room out the back, and in somewhere like Sweden, where I am now, I'll put it on a heated floor in the bathroom, or I used to have an old fridge that was hot on the top, I could put it up there, uh, or on top of the hot water heater. You're looking for a temperature between 20 and 30 degrees one week. Now, what you do need to do, and this is why it's good to have it in the bathroom or the kitchen, every day is just loosen the top like that and it will go psh. And that's because there will be a buildup of some carbon dioxide in here and you need to let that out. This is why you always should do this in a plastic bottle and not glass because glass will explode and that's not fun, I promise you. And plastic can take a lot of uh, expansion and pressure. But just do this once a week, psh, uh, once a day, sorry, to let out the um, overpressure. Um, after one week, this is ready. Uh, I usually prefer to leave it 10 days or seven, but you can start using it after one week. Um, and then you will see that there will be small white flakes of yeast. This is because of the microbes in the EM when it's perfectly normal. Uh, don't worry about it. It will look something like uh, this. Uh, it's a, a kind of, yeah, you know, like a nice brown color and the smell is mm, a little bit acidic. The pH on this is really quite low. Um, so this is uh, acidic, you can test it with a litmus and look for something between four and a half and five uh, on the pH thing. Um, and it's ready to use. Try to use this within one month um, because it's not laboratory conditions. The ones that I showed you, that bag and box, that's uh, completely air free because the bag, the vacuum bag releases the um, extra I mean, you don't get any extra air in the vacuum bag. Here you get a little bit of contamination because there's always air. If you make a big batch, like five liters or, or 10 liters, transfer it now and then to smaller bottles so that you get minimized the amount of air in the top. And then the better thing is to make this uh, often, like make it every week. So what I'm thinking is if you want to use EM in your garden and there's no limit to how much you can use, you can spray it quite often out in your garden. So this will take, a spray like this that goes on your hose will take one liter of EM, activated EM. Hmm? Um, there's a line here, that's one liter. So that will take this much. So what you could do is get in the habit of doing a batch of this maybe every second Sunday. And on the other, uh, every second Sunday, you could do this, uh, for example, you know. So uh, one week you make it, and another week you take one of these and you fill it here and spray it in your garden, whatever, so that you're regularly spraying your garden during the summer with EMA. And I promise you it will make a really big difference. So that was quite a long um, uh, video for, for, for making EMA, but it's an important topic. And it's really, really worth doing because that's how simple it is. And you save yourself a huge amount of money by doing this and will add enormous value to the garden. So, you know, give it a go. And it's not even that expensive. If you can buy these small bottles to start, one of these, 250 mils, uh, will last, will make five of these. And that's an awful lot of EM that you're, you're getting for your money. So have a go.